Thank the Lord. Now at this time, we're going to get ready to start going into the Word. Because God is good, not some of the time, but all the time. And this night is not going to have nothing to do with none of us in this place on tonight. But this night had to do with the most highest God, the God that we serve. This night is set aside and dedicated to Him. This is a night that you want to get out of self and get into the Spirit. Because it's all about Him and nothing about us. And we're going to learn on tonight. Through all the words that we'll be ministering on tonight, that worship is when you get out of step and you allow the Holy Ghost to take you into the presence of the Most High God. Hey. Hallelujah. Now at this time, everybody stand to your feet. At this time, we want to give a warm welcome and praise to our first lady, Rosheba Thomas, that will break forth the word of God on tonight. with him. 
And Isaac his son and claimed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, I believe true worship is based on the revelation of God. The word revelation is defined as an act of revealing or communicating divine truth. When you reveal something, you allow an understanding of something, inner or hidden. Abraham had a, had a revelation of God. He understood who God is. He had revelation of worship. See, God revealed himself to Abraham through worship. Because he had a revelation of God as he worshipped, he didn't appear doubtful, but he trusted that as a result of his worship, that God would provide. In addition, David was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, so David also possessed a revelation of God and worship. Both David and Abraham had an assurance. They had relationship. Worship is not based on my dislikes or my likes. It's not based on my personal preferences or my priorities. It's based on the revelation of God, which is obtained by the way of breath, relationship, and fellowship. Amen. Next, preparation. Abraham made preparations to obey God. He rose early, got the servants together. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, saddled his ass, took, the, took his son, and set out. Likewise, David made preparations. Although David was greatly distressed, he and, both, he and all his men lost all that they had. They, they lost their wives, they lost their possessions, and, the, and even his men, the ones who were supposed to be fighting with him, thought of stoning him. <laughs> but yet before he worshiped, he made preparation. Scripture says in 1 Samuel 30 and 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord. That was how he prepared for worship. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Now just like Abraham and David, we need to make the appropriate preparations in order to worship God. We cannot come before God just any kind of way and say we're ready to worship. You can't just cuss somebody out before you get into the house of God and say you're ready to worship. You can't fight with your husband and your wife and then come into the house of God and say you're ready to worship. God forbid. Hallelujah. All right. Nevertheless, Dedication. Abraham dedicated his son Isaac to God. Yeah. It wasn't like he had 12 sons. Isaac was his only son. Isaac was the son God promised to him years prior. Isaac was the son that was to carry on the family line and grow into a great nation. Abraham also dedicated himself completely to God. As Abraham stood holding the knife above his head, ready to plunge it into his son, he was completely dead of self. Likewise, David was not focused on what was going on around him. He did not allow the process or the calamity to cloud his mind. He instructed Abiathar, the priest, to bring him the ephod. Now understand this, in the Old Testament, the ephod was mostly a priestly garment, or one used in the worship of God. See, like David and Abraham, we must be willing to give our best for God's best. We must be focused on the promise and not the process. Y'all won't help me in this place. Can I hear somebody shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. We looked at the, now we looked at the various elements of true worship. We've looked at revelation, we've looked at preparation, and we've looked at dedication. So now let us examine the results of, of the benefits of true worship, which brings me to restoration. See, we see that Isaac was restored to his father and David recovered all. That is what true worship does for us. Amen. See, the Bible says that those who wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Only true worship can do this. We can sing our favorite songs, we can do our dance, we can have an emotional experience and go through the formality of the, of, of the appearance of worship. Come on. But if we have not truly worshiped, yeah. this, this experience will quickly fade. And when the music is over and the preacher has preached his sermon, what happens as a result of this is the test of true worship. 
I know this ain't a shout and a feel good message, but that's okay. It's, it, it, it's in the word. Let me hear you say it's in the word. It's in the word. Look to the other neighbor and say it's in the word. It's in the word. Now let's look at confirmation. God confirmed or authenticated his covenant with Abraham by declaring that he, God Almighty, would bless Abraham because Abraham had worshipped. In worship, David inquired of the Lord and God answered him. We find here the principle that worship results in the blessing of the worshiper. If God's blessing seems absent from your life, perhaps it's due to an absence of true worship in your life. Again, the true test of our worship is not what makes, is not what takes place in your churches on Sunday. It's not what you do before others to appear like you're worshiping. Amen. But it's what takes place after you leave this place. It's what takes place after you've experienced worship. I just want, I just want you to understand on today that true worship, oh God, true worship will determine your success. Understand this, and y'all should not look at me, if, if, if I was on Periscope, I'd say give me some hearts, yeah. share with your followers. If I was on Facebook, I'd say like and share my status, but because I'm in the house of the Lord, I, I wanna hear you say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I wanna hear you say, I wanna hear you give God some praise in this place of tonight. See, I want you to understand that God is looking for people who's ready to truly worship. Yeah. Oh God, y'all don't hear me in this place. God is looking for people Worship him come hell or high water. God is looking for people who will worship him regardless of what you're going through. When you receive the disconnect notice, will you worship him? When you're experiencing pain in your body, will you worship him? When you lost all that you had, like David, will you worship him? God is looking for true worshipers, not to put on an appearance. See, too often we're focused on the process and not the promise. You may feel sometimes like you're losing your mind. But God said that if you keep your mind stayed on me, Amen. I'll keep you in perfect peace. That's the promise. Yeah. I know sometimes it feels like you're giving all that you have. You're giving all your money. You're giving all your time. Nobody else is doing anything. You're doing it all. But God said that if you give, I'll give it back unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. So I want you to understand that the process is you give it. The promise is that God will give it back unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. I just want you to understand, don't focus on the process. Focus on the promises of God. And as you focus on the promises of God, then you will begin to be able to truly worship God. Is that all right? Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I just get excited about who God is in my life. Word coming from our sister in the Lord, 